Hello everyone and welcome to another video. Now recently my Ryzen's Wraith caller has started to sound like a wheezing donkey. <laughs> the variable RPM is accompanied by odd changes in audible tone. This recent occurrence finally encouraged me to treat myself to an aftermarket solution, but until that arrives I wanted to find a temporary fix. Setting the CPU fan profile to silent in the BIOS helped, but as you would expect, the effect on temperature was negative. I then underclocked the CPU to 3.2 GHz, and this kept the now near silently called 3600 at under 35 degrees idle. Everything was fine and stable. This is when curiosity got the better of me. I'd like to reiterate that word, curiosity. You shouldn't do the following because there's no point unless you want lower power consumption, but in that case, you should just buy a low power processor. So back in the BIOS, I just kept dropping the clock ratio, rebooting into Windows, restarting, and then repeating, with the clock speed getting lower every time until I just thought, let me just put five in this box. That didn't work, and eight was the lowest we could go. This then meant that after saving the settings and exiting, our Ryzen 5 3600 would be running at just 800 MHz, or 0.8 GHz. Bear in mind that the minimum speed recommended by Microsoft for Windows 10 is 1 GHz, so this should be interesting. After a quick check on our new clock speed in CPU-Z, it was time to assess performance. Actually booting into Windows and navigating the desktop felt pretty much the same until it came to internet browsing. There were a couple of freezes here and there, which occurred in Edge, Chrome and Firefox. YouTube video playback was also fine, and browsing Facebook, checking email and whatnot was still acceptable. I then fired up Cinebench R20, the latest software version in which my stock 3600 scores 3489 points. At 0.8 GHz, things are surely going to be interesting to say the least. Remember we do still have 6 cores and 12 threads at our disposal, but I'm not sure how much they'll help. 8 minutes and 6 seconds later, and the run was complete, with a new multi-core score of 689. This is about 80% slower. Our 800MHz Ryzen could still handle a bit of video editing though. I opened up a new project in Premiere Pro 2015, whereby I rendered a 30 second 1080p 60fps gameplay clip of Rage 2. Rendering this clip took about 1 minute and 10 seconds on the underclocked Ryzen, which is still respectable, if you ask me, but it does pale in comparison to the 18 second render time of the stock clocked chip. Right, so now it was time for some gaming, and opening up Steam and Origin actually caused a bigger than expected hindrance. Both were sluggish to navigate, taking a while to launch my games, and in some instances the games didn't launch at all. Eventually though, things worked themselves out and it was time to start. First up it was the turn of some well-known CPU hogs, namely Battlefield 5 and CSGO. Battlefield 5 ran, but it was a bit of a stuttery mess at times. To be expected, I guess. The average was actually 49 FPS at 1080p high, with 1 and 0.1% lows of 15 and 10 respectively. Compared to the stock Ryzen, and it was of course the improvement in percentile figures that helped us out the most. I'm using a GTX 980 in the system today as I'm making sure all this card works properly for another time, so bear in mind that you will see even better results with a more powerful GPU, and the difference will of course be larger. CSGO also suffered a bit as far as a smooth frame rate was concerned. 54 FPS on average isn't bad, but we were seeing a lot of stuttering and dips etc, even at 1080p very low. When you compare this to the standard clock speed results, you can see just how much CSGO relies on processor power. Still, it was a playable experience at 800MHz to some extent. Kingdom Come Deliverance also took a beating, but not as much as my character. It was obvious from the start that things were going to be affected as the normally instantaneous loading process took a very long time. Once we were in the game and after I had managed to wind up the whole town, 1080p medium granted us an average frame rate of 40, with lows of 23 and 3. It didn't feel as bad as those numbers make it seem. However, some games couldn't care less about our processor speed, especially if they are more GPU dependent. Rage 2, for example, ran very similar both times round, 
But again, bear in mind the 980 was still maxing out. So if I had a 1080 in here or something, the gap would likely be even bigger. Still, focusing on the CPU and it's clear that 0.8 GHz is of no negative concern to this title. And the game just ran very well. The same can nearly be said for Resident Evil 7. This game presented a nice average frame rate, though there were some instances of drops, most noticeably when going through doors, something that wasn't present at stock CPU speeds. So I guess there we have it. This has probably been one of the most pointless videos you'll watch this year, or perhaps ever, but curiosity just got the better of me here. I did something similar a few years ago, where I underclocked a G3258, I believe it was, to 1 GHz, and that being a 2 core CPU anyway, wasn't exactly the best performer with the standard clock speeds, at least not towards the end of its life. Nonetheless, I hope you've enjoyed watching this. Please do not repeat anything you've seen in this video, especially that terrible donkey impression at the start. If you enjoyed it, leave a like on it down below. Leave a dislike if you didn't. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already, and hopefully I'll see all of you in the next one.